Like my intro is going to look a lot more like the weather in the well in the next couple months for sure as the uh, uh, spring is uh, slowly coming upon us. But for the most part, there's really not much to say in terms of uh, the weather without uh, jinxing it already. Um, so we're going to jump right in and talk about some news items. I got a lot to talk about with uh, historic preservation, in which I covered that for the uh, Fort Missoula Hospital, in which a developer wants to uh, basically. Uh, uh, save the old building while at the same time potentially using it as a Trojan horse for uh, private development. So uh, we'll hear more about that during my city council report and part of my news story as well as we kind of actually jump right into that uh, right now. Why not we just give you a little bit more background. Um, let's see. The F Missoula's former hospital that sits on the Fort Missoula property is looking to get a facelift since 2019 owner Max Wolf, a developer with North of the Border LLC, has had his heart set on restoring the old hospital, uh, which was used during the World War II internment camp um, and later forgotten for about 20 years just to be uh, just to try to restore the building until it seemed to be unfeasible at the time. It was uh, a mental health hospital for umpteen years as well before it was finally uh, uh, abandoned and then eventually sold uh, back in 2019. So Missoula City Council and Historic Preservation is the oversight on potential use of this building. The goal, according to Wolf, would create a cafe of sorts and utilize existing building. Some of the past projects include the downtown central building in the 1890s Grandeur with uh, help from partners and fellow uh, developer David Gray of DVG Architecture. On top of this, this would also provide 15 new residential units behind and around the five acre private property. Uh, their goal is to save existing building and expect uh, to be putting in millions of dollars to this old hospital. And uh, we actually are taking some pictures from Missoula Current um, uh, just to kind of see the whole building. And as you can see here, this is the uh, front facade of the building. And as we scroll down, we see some of the uh, water heaters, some of the rooms that are in here. And you know, this is one of the better rooms that they have there. But as we get further down into the rabbit hole, we start seeing uh, some of the more uh, older buildings disarray. They said that this particular room, the large room on the third floor, was somewhat used uh, for target practice in a way. And so you can see some of the stairs, some of the hallways. It's just uh, essentially abandoned buildings. And they will attest that uh, most of the time, a lot of these buildings have been broken into umpteen times for uh, um, through uh, vandalizing and various means as well. So that is one of their uh, uh, motivations behind getting this uh, old building done is uh, there's a lot of other old buildings in the site of Fort Missoula that are um, in disarray and need some repairs and they're using uh, this development as a way to restore the old hospital building. So good intentions in terms of that. Um, in the state of Montana, move forward with getting uh, rid of primaries in Montana as we technically go towards the concept of independent choices, ranked choice voting. So two bills, one bill was called Senate Bill 566, would remove primary voting for which requires the voter to pick a Republican or Democrat and not be able to vote from a non-party position. This also comes out of the fact that Montana has a supermajority of GOP led in the state House and Senate with the lone Democrat on the national stage being John Tester, who will be running in this next election. Skeptics, aka Democrats, are worried that this would interfere with John Tester's chance for a fair and equal election, while the GOP said it would remove the idea of partisan politics and approach it from an independent stance. Although uh, ranked choice voting was put on the ballot as Senate Bill uh, 598, um, some GOP was very skeptical is that just because we are in a GOP supermajority doesn't mean it's going to swing the other way, which kind of somewhat exposed that. So. Um, uh, this also came at the heels of when Alaska voted for a Democrat using this ranked choice voting system and some GOP were worried that tides would change and uh, voted against Senate Bill 598, which passed anyways. And, uh, and uh, another big item in Montana was the uh, train derailment that happened a week ago. Sanders County official claimed that there was a derailment into the Clark Fork River near their Paradise, Montana. None of them spilled any chemicals. This happened last Sunday around 9 a.m. and the Montana Rail Link have said that no injury and accidents are under investigation. And of course, not to derail people who are happy that Trump got indicted, but it won't stop him from heavily influence the upcoming election. As we've been hearing in the media left and right, uh, Trump was arraigned on Tuesday, which basically meant that he had to go to New York 
turn himself in, but at the same time, there's some skepticism that he didn't actually have to show up in person and could have easily just zoomed in uh, and had a video conference to get uh, arraigned. So there's a lot of interesting things going on here as well as where uh, prosecutors are confident that the former president used hush money tactics to hide a shameful part of the, his past to give him the edge in the 2016 election. The judge read 34 charges to which Donald Trump pleaded not guilty to all of them. Um, and on his Truth Social, he posted, heading to lower Manhattan, the courthouse, seems so surreal. Wow, they are going to arrest me. Can't believe this is happening in America, MAGA. You can read the 16-page document through AP and pretty much uh, most uh, news stations that will be eclipsing this during the election for the foreseeable future. And, you know, whether you love him or hate him, it, he's going to be a very uh, big part of this upcoming election, whether he actually runs for president or not. If he doesn't give any some kind of Trump approval, then the GOP are kind of split between um, dealing with them or having him as an ally. So think about it like that. And um, so, yeah, so those are some of the news items that are happening. I have to get through a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to jump into a little bit more lighting, uh, light fluff. And this is a tease for our Saturday drop-ins. Also, our dance party and also our summer camps that are happening this uh, this summer for MCAT. And for more information about our camps and more, you can go to MCAT.org. But for... Uh, uh, for the, in the meantime, here's a tease of what some of the kids might be making during these camps. It's time for summer in Montana, and why wait when MCAT is offering summer kids programs for the months of July and August? For three weeks, we will bring back our stop animation camps for kids getting used to production and video editing, followed by our horror camp for more advanced filmmakers. But that's not all. I wonder how long he's gonna keep us waiting. Yeah, he just keeps staring out that window. Through these camps, kids will learn how to create stories and bring them to life and make lasting friendships along the way. Let's go! Log on to MCAT.org to sign up or call us at 542-MCAT. Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to jump right in. We're going to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. It is a thick Friday, as in there's a lot of stuff happening this Friday because it is also first Friday in the downtown Missoula area. So if you're doing some things in and around, uh, perhaps you do, uh, you know want to go see a movie this weekend as well. So we're kicking things off with, yes, it's the Mario movie. And of course, many uh, critics are already uh, condemning this movie before they even get a chance to give it a chance. So why don't you just give it a, a video game that's made into a movie about a guy who doesn't talk and then have a bunch of other characters in this. So enjoy a series that, that has most people hyped 
to trash this film. Enjoy a series of celebrities taking roles from voice actors in this movie about a guy who jumps on turtles and ingests mushrooms to feel big. Mo Mario is on his journey to help defend the Mushroom Kingdom from the evil Bowser voiced by Jack Black, who isn't the craziest choice for Bowser, but watch Chris, he's so cool, Pratt, basically kill Mario and always sunny in with Luigi's Mansion joins the iconic duel in this choose-your-own Mario Kart adventure. Moving on, we got Air. Hey, you like Michael Jordan. Well, you're not going to get him. You're going to get a whole bunch of other characters talking about Michael Jordan in this movie where they're basically building a specific shoe for Michael Jordan. And I guess the biggest controversy is, like, if you got too much red in that shoe, you're going to get fined. I don't know. This was, it's, it's weird. I, I watched part of the trailer and it's like, what is this movie? It's, it's basically like one of those things. It's, so anyways, um, you know, if you want to learn more about this, uh, it's basically you can watch this snidbit, like 15 minute uh, uh, Air Jordan kind of thing in the Last Dance uh, documentary, which portrayed this nicely and was about 10 to 15 minute footnote in uh, his history. But enjoy a dramatized version that follows everybody but Jordan. It might not be Space Jam, but it could be like Mike. Um, next we got Pope's Exorcist, back when mental illness was treated by priests. Enjoy a horror story about a devil-like creature inside a young boy. Tropes include possession, climbing on walls, and spinning their head, not to mention puking on people and slashing at them for some reason, and just basic uh, uh, mesothelioma, basically. Consult your doctor beforehand to see if uh, possession is right for you. Russell Crowe is the Pope's Exorcist because uh, only the top dog can handle this bad old demon. And we got a bunch of other movies that are coming out, so I'm going to speed right through them right now. Paint, Bob Ross meets Best in Show. There always needs to be have this low-key comedy where characters are funnier when they act uh, uh, what they actually say rather than how they say it. Uh, when you read the script, it's just another run-of-the-mill old versus new hotness in this TV how-to-paint world. Um, uh, uh, this one's called The Portable Door. Let me guess, there's a door that can transport you to another world. Narnia rules, but with modern corporate twists, it's like Harry Potter equivalent of cubicle workers in the Ministry of Magic. Um, then we got On a Wings and a Prayer. It's based on a true story, which it never felt so bland about a man who must step up and fly a plane when the pilot dies, probably of boredom. All right, so those are the movies that are coming out this weekend. I got a movie for you guys. It's from uh, the 1940 movie Pearl Fixer, where I redubbed it for your pleasure. All right, the first meaning of the evil oil barons. All right, agenda set. Mm, I'd like to bring up some new business. All right, go ahead. I just think it's about time that we each of us have our own refrigerator in our offices. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. What? Time and time again, I've had people just come in and steal my food. I've labeled it. They keep on eating my food, and I don't... Oh, come on, just that one time? You think I wanted to do this? This is your fault. Town Square shaming is not cool. Get, just stop. I understand your grievances, but we're ordering out I today. want Tony's Pepino pizzas. The easy answer is always pizza. Can we choose something else? Oh, I have to agree with Howard for the first time. Pizza does sound derivative. Ugh. I know that you've been going through some stuff lately with the separation and all. My wife says Patty's on the verge of coming back. Are you really going to put my personal life on the table in this board meeting? That's just not really cool. This is my personal life. I don't like people talking about my personal life. And yet you make everyone problem your problem. John, that's not acceptable. We need to come together, and we need to agree on what we're going to have for lunch today. I'm partial to deli sandwiches. What do you guys think? Come on now. You all get to build your own sandwiches. You can put how much meat you want to put that's on it. That's how you get gout. That's crazy. Gout? Who are you, Henry VIII? What about chicken nuggets? I like chicken nuggets. No, we're eating at Cheesecake Factory. Uh, now take uh, your uh, enlarged menus in the form of a newspaper. They're really big. You know, I, for one, don't really like the Cheesecake Factory because I don't actually get to eat cheesecake after I've eaten my meal. They load it with so much food, and you, you, can't, you're not even, you can't even eat the cheesecake. I want to eat the cheesecake, but I can't just eat the cheesecake before a meal. That's just stupid. All right, all right. I know tensions are high, and I know the Cheesecake Factory isn't for everyone, but they have an array of stuff on their menu. We can order one cheesecake for everybody, and I'll put it on my tab. You don't have to pay. All right, I'm sure all you know what you want from the Cheesecake Factory by now. So, what is it exactly that you all want? Huh? Huh? Well, that 
That's weird. Time is an illusion. There is an adult version of chicken nuggets, by the way. Oh, why is he targeting me? It's called chicken strips. Oh, wh wh what did I ever do to you? Oh, don't fret. He always lashes out the weakest member of our board. I am the weakest member. All right, what do we got here? All right. Oh, yeah, using prison labor to drill into the Amazon. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> We're evil. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some city council stuff. Kicking things off is Daniel Carlino, who is very concerned about the closure of the emergency winter shelter and believes it should be on uh, offered longer and we should have be better. Uh, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, my brain just stopped for the, there for a second. For anyways, uh, here's Daniel Carlino talking about his position on homelessness in the city of Missoula. It's going to cause a lot of other issues around town that are going to pull on police and fire resources and parks and rec, and and it's going to be really difficult for all those people that have been having a nice warm place to stay at the emergency winter shelter. And um, I don't, I think we really need to try and get our priorities, funding priorities a little bit um, in order with this uh, in the coming budget session. We should have a warm place for people to stay at night in Missoula every night of the year. And um, and the truth is that some of the other shelters are, our old other shelters are full and we don't have enough shelter beds after we close down this emergency winter shelter. And um, we saw it coming a mile away and it's our duty as the semicircle to make sure that we have enough funding for everybody to have somewhere to keep their head at night. I think it's the cheaper option and it's definitely the more humane option. So I hope that we can uh, fund these shelters year round um, in the coming uh, budget year. And you know, uh, back to um, uh, Michael, Mars, uh, Michael Moore's point, not the documentarian, but he used to be with Operation um, Homeless Connect, which became um, Operation Connections, Community Connect. And he, and he was a staunch believer in the fact that if you keep people out of, off of the street, they don't end up using the services at, of the hospital um, that could have easily been avoided from hypothermia and other um, outdoor related uh, causes to certain issues for long-term exposure. So uh, those are just one of the things I wanted to mention as well as we're gonna actually jump into the end of the uh, uh, quote unquote uh, city council where they talk about the legislation session. So let's go. Uh, Jessica Miller with the Office of the Mayor gives another update on the legislature of Montana bill is being passed and uh, tabled alike. So this is Jessica Miller. So next week on the 13th is the transmittal of amendments to general bills. And so that's when we'll be able to start um, having having a good idea of what these bills are going to look like in their final form. So um, any major amendments that they made in the Senate would then have to be transmitted back to the House by then and, and vice versa um, for those general bills that do not involve um, revenue and appropriations. Um, and then uh, the following week, Friday the 21st, would be the deadline for transmittal um, for amendments uh, for revenue and appropriations bills. Okay, so that was the first part of the uh, the uh, what she was talking about. Let me go. I gotta. Geez, where are my notes? Okay, here we go. Uh, we are about two thirds done with the uh, 90 day sessions. Um, Jessica Go goes into more detail on specific bills Missoula has kept their eye on. So here's Jessica Miller again. So House Bill 865 uh, was one that would set a local government local government expenditure limit. That one did fail on second reading in the House or in the yeah, on the House floor today, so that was a good one for us. Um, Senate Bill 519, revising laws uh, relating to maximum mill levies, that one was tabled. Uh, Senate Bill 511, revising government entity limitations on property tax increases, that one uh, passed second reading. Senate Bill 523, generally revising tax increment financing laws. That one passed second reading. Um, that one would have a dramatic impact on all of our tax increment financing programs, um, everything going through MRA. Okay, so those are kind of the big ones that are going to be affecting more of uh, Missoula's uh, revenue in which uh, they can use uh, the TIF to help leverage some um, blight and um, sidewalks to use and stuff like that. Say what you will against TIFs, it's one of the few ways the city could leverage developers to build better infrastructure like roads and sidewalks to give them a tax incentive. But saying that, I can also see a lot of good intention policies that tend to put bad tastes in folks' mouths. They, this also on the cusp of Missoula actually lowering our MRA budget. At the same time, there is a, a Biden's Build Back Better 
a bill that Missoula has, uh, is planning on leaning on for many of the things which involve the Kagan's Corridor and the Brooks Corridor, to say the least. So uh, the workforce credit, uh, which was meant to help uh, people moving to Montana for work uh, for subsidized housing, for lack of a better term, but uh, that did not come to pass. Uh, overall, the Senate will wrap up amendments before the beginning, bringing them before the House for final approval. I had uh, more on City Council, but historic preservation definitely eclipsed a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today. So I'm going to jump right into um, that as I go right into my uh, full-fledged uh, City Council report involving historic preservation. So the meeting was three hours long. A lot of the chunk of it was uh, devoted to half of it was mostly devoted to the presentation, the staff report, in which the staff report basically said that they were uh, uh, the, uh, the developers were unable to come up with uh, um, any of the recommendations that historic preservation put into the uh, thing to match what would be considered the character overlay, even though that many of the developers who spoke at this said that they would be uh, able to match it and not to mention a lot of the site would be able to uh, uh, utilize uh, the residential and retail uh, commercial aspects of this site for better taxes in the future. So anyways, many people are concerned that this is just another Merck situation that could balloon into gentrification that Missoulians sure love. Uh, anyways, there's a, uh, there is context in this short and we'll dive right into everything. So Elizabeth Johnson, Historic Preservation Officer, uh, gave the uh, staff report on this and this is what she had to say about that. The elevator addition will match the texture, style, finish, and color of the existing building, but will be clearly differentiated as a new addition, as you can see here. The applicant also proposes to restore original materials on the post hospital wherever possible. Where original materials cannot be re repaired, they will be replaced in kind. The most significant exterior change to the post hospital is the replacement of the existing windows throughout the building with new metal clad sticking windows and replacing the existing front door with a historic style door. And lastly, the applicant proposes installing infill guards with glazing panels to meet code, which you can see here and here. Additionally, the applicant proposes constructing seven new buildings on the post hospital parcel two along the northern property line and five along the southern property line. Four of the proposed buildings labeled in this image as three, four, five, and six are proposed to be in an entirely contemporary design with two stories and gabled roofs. Building one and two seen here are a mix of architectural elements seen throughout the fort and buildings one, two, and six have a footprint that is similar to that of the post hospital. Here we have commercial building one, as it's called, with horizontal siding with a wood grain texture, a hip roof, and as asphalt architectural shingle roofing proposed, and an open front porch with box columns that is proposed to cut into the setback that characterizes the fort. All right, so it uh, kind of reminds me some of this architecture for the realty, if you look at it closely, it kind of reminds me of what they built on the uh, Missoula Fairgrounds um, for this particular instance. Um, uh, those were some of the images uh, provided to get an idea of what this could look like if the developers were to get approval and move forward on this. Historic preservation, uh, you know, uh, um, Elizabeth Johnson uh, didn't recommend that this uh, would, basically this does not, um, does not, would not keep up with the historic standards and character overlay based on the staff report. Uh, it is, uh, keep it historic is the best way to sum it up when building in the area, but the staff report have thus far denied developers to attempts to build out, but at the same time, historic preservation will not essentially get the final say in this, even though they do would recommend to uh, the city of Missoula that this is not good. So the man behind the, this development, Max Wolf, talks about this particular property in this meeting. So this is what he had to say. I wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to meet me and hopefully you can see I'm not someone flying into Missoula to secure a payday and then headed out of town. I consider myself a Missoulian. I care about Missoula's past, present and future. I understand there are going to be differences in opinion about our proposal. I believe what we've put forward makes sense for the community. It would finally once and for all rehabilitate the old post hospital, a gem of the Fort Missoula area. But let's be real, this work is not going to be cheap. Hence the proposed commercial and residential components. Those are the aspects of the development that make the rehabilitation of the old post hospital fiscally, fiscally feasible. There's no giant payday at the end of this for anyone involved. 
We are in it for the long haul with the community in mind. We've seen the addition of the new structures and fields at the regional park and the integrity of the fort hasn't diminished. We think we can accomplish the same dynamic on this side of the fort and make it a welcoming space for the entire entire Missoula community. All right, so that was uh, Max Schwolf on that one. He brought up his developer to talk a little bit more about some of the uh, things. And you know, as somebody who's lived in Missoula for his whole life, I can attest that this building, if anything, would have uh, to come down if it were to keep things the way they are. And unlike the mercantile, we can save this building, but because of dramatic changes in Missoula since the Merc, many are frustrated at, at raising taxes and lack of affordable housing that not being built in the short term. So uh, David Gray, architect who worked with the uh, radio building downtown, also did the Elks Lodge apartment restoration, spoke on the fort site and uh, district's older buildings and about some of the issues that uh, that particular part of Fort Missoula is going through. We have the Fort Missoula Regional Park and some of its modern, uh, we got Montana Modern Building here. We have very contemporary uh, support facilities back there. Some more additional park uh, buildings, uh, support facilities. These are all in the historic Fort Museum District. As you move around the park, uh, we have some older uh, original Fort Missoula buildings that are falling to disrepair with the paint falling off, the wood is rotting. There's a bunch of utility buildings that are out there. Some more uh, buildings that are rotting. This is a historic motor pool. This is the old batting cages, which is a manufactured log home installed on the site. There are piles of trash, piles of trash, piles of trash, haphazard uh, stuff out in the back of the Fort Museum. It's hard to know if it's a display or a salvage yard. There's rusting metal, sharp metal, more piles of trash, uh, more salvage yard, giant piles of fill. This is across the front door of the hospital. Rotting logs line the entire road, massive pile stockpile, stockpile of fill materials. There is a bleacher structural system rusting on the side of the road. This is all on our side of the fort. All right. So, yeah, he goes on to talk about some of the more uh, issues that are happening in the Fort Missoula uh, area. Um, but as we're jumping in and we're going into uh, moving forward, David Gray goes to this uh, riff for about another four minutes. The, these are forgotten buildings, and uh, the further you get from them, the, uh, the, the further you get from the historic museum at Fort Missoula, the worse it kind of gets. Mark also mentions that there are new buildings uh, we'll see not be seen because of evergreen trees obstructing the view from Central Fort. David says that you won't be able to see it. He was uh, full of beans during this part of the presentation and stated taxpayers have paid about 25000 a year for these empty buildings to remain. Um, of course, I spent too much time on this essential proposal and just talking about the developers, but we're going to talk about more of the uh, public reaction and the input. So here's John, um, uh, John Langstaff uh, talking in reaction to uh, some of these comments made. I feel words like holy crud and horror show are not appropriate ways to address this audience or your members here. Um, a generation ago, we had the Save the Fort uh, push, which was massively attended, and I'm sure the further uh, hearings are also going to be massively in opposition to this incredible short-sighted economic plan that these owners think they deserve. Um, nobody forced them to buy this property. And in, instead of neglect, I prefer to re Give it a second. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, he, he, he had a really good point, too. I really wanted to uh, show the rest of it, but that's as far as we can go. John has lived in Missoula his whole life and said the development isn't the best use for this property. Didn't like the developer talk, talking down to the people on the property just to justify the condos. Uh, Leah Trehan, attorney for Bailey and uh, Latimer, uh, for uh, representing the uh, Save the Fort Incorporated, talks a little bit more about the... Uh, the legal ramifications. We do understand and are very cognizant of the fact that restoring a historic resource requires um, extensive investment, um, but unfortunately we feel the application here has not met the requisite criteria. 
Um, in sum, we respectfully request that the application for a historical preservation permit be denied. Um, we agree with the staff recommendation to deny the application for authorization to alter or to engage in new construction for the reasons laid out in the staff report and in our March letter for the proposed project. And I won't belabor the point here. I just want to briefly highlight that generally the project is currently proposed fails as stated in the staff report to sufficiently incorporate design elements of the old post hospital and other nearby buildings, which results in the application failing to meet several criteria, including that design of new construction shall be compatible with the character of historical resources in the immediate area under 2085-085-H2. All right, so uh, that's, and that's not all. Uh, we also have another attorney that pops up to uh, kind of uh, um, basically strike uh, just at the point of that. So um, in many ways, one can see the restoration of project as a Trojan horse to build out. The point both sides agree on is the fact that these buildings are old and are in need of repair, but this development may not be the right decision because there's the, uh, the right to develop versus the actual plans that are gonna have into developing this. And this is what uh, Trian, the attorney, was mentioning this. Uh, in otherwise, any destruction of this property, according to the attorney for Save the Fort, believe there are no burden of proof to demolish these buildings. So Roshko, uh, the also the attorney for the Save the Fort, stated that the developers weren't able to update their designs to meet staff recommendations, and this would a, be a dichotomy of destruction in terms of moving forward with this process. It's clear from the staff report that they attempted to meet with staff, that they didn't make adjustments that were suggested, and yet they put this dichotomy forward. Uh, in terms of process, when we got the staff report, we went through it. I assume the developer also got the staff report. Um, we felt like that there were places that needed comment. We prepared comment. The staff memo indicated that we needed to have that comment to you today. And we provided that comment to you today in written format with direct references to our view of the staff report. We haven't seen anything comparable from the developer. Further, this developer has owned this project for over now three and a half years. Yet, despite the condition of the property, they waited until just this fall to start the application process. If it's so dire, why the delay? And yet we hear these comments on economics. It'll cost $5 million. We must have the housing to finance it. I've looked through the application. There's no pro forma. There's no cost budget. This is just bluff. We don't know and you shouldn't be forced into the decision that the developer is asking you to make on those sorts of grounds. We claim that we have one of the most experienced developers of historic buildings in the entire country before us. This is not an Sorry about that. Uh. Uh. Oh well, he had, a, he had such a strong ending too, that's too bad. Uh, that was terrible. Internet! Uh, yeah, so anyways, uh, yeah, that was, that, a, a big part of this was to uh, basically prove that the developer, it just basically bought the property, sat on, for, sat on for a while, basically struck when the iron was hot and be like, hey, we should just develop this, and we, we can't afford to pay for this, let's build the condos, and then just try to get permission from this or preservation to basically build any kind of retail and condos. I mean, they gave the, the rough designs and the kind of idea behind it. I mean, I'm assuming they put a lot of work into this presentation, but at the same time, there just wasn't necessarily up to bringing that, uh, according to the attorneys, the burden of proof that these buildings actually need uh, saving in the time frame that they've already had the building for as long as they have. So Steve Locken, Preservation Award winner from the 90s, says uh, the development is good for the area, but uh, this is what he had to say about that. But I think we need to figure out a way to mix historic preservation with the vitality of a community. You can't just say, well, there's a historic decaying building over there. Not very many people go to it. There's only 30,000 visitors that come to the historical museum out there. There's probably more people than that in a single week that go to the soccer fields. So unless we can get people and vitality out there, and do a sensitive restoration project of the hospital and the grounds around there, I think we need to reconsider how we're doing this. By the way, I have Salish and Kootenai friends 
that are still bummed out that they never had a chance to have a historical review of the mission revival style that the fort decided to put out there in spite of the fact that they used to have the most abundant bitterroot crop out there in that field. Thank you. All right, so that was uh, one of the comments uh, from uh, Steve Walken. Uh, urgency has it resulted in the bucking back of this property and honestly, uh, as I was writing this report, I kind of agree agreed with the developer in the beginning, but as we dive deeper into the small part of a growing issue, that is the future of the fort and not just uh, what, it, what it could be, what it is, and just uh, Tate Jones, who actually works uh, out of the military museum, out of the fort, talks a little bit more about this, uh, um, about his perspective of this site. I will note, has Western Montana Mental Health Center sought to exit the structure in the late 2010s? NRHC made several written inquiries to the staff and board of, of Mental Health Center seeking to open discussion as to the structure's disposition. No reply of substance was ever received. In November 2019, representatives of the Fort Missoula Historic District approached the Missoula County Commissioners in their capacity with the other BCCs of Western Montana has board oversight of the Mental Health Center to address the matter constructively. They declined to take any direct action and said, curiously, with no organizational footing, I can discern that the matter rests with the city. The result of the BCC's lack of action are evident tonight in this hearing. I will agree with NOTB Wolf on one matter tonight, and that is the documentation of present structural problems in the hospital. I would note for the record that the owner of the building for nearly 60, 50 years was the Mental Health Center, and in that context, I would note further that the matter of how a building transferred for public benefit in 1963 ended up being subject to private development in 2023 is certainly worthy of some hard organizational scrutiny and that WMMHC's oversight of the building and sub subsequent sale to the private sector should certainly be taken into account the next time Western Montana Mental Health Center seeks a public property favor. All right, so yeah, that was uh, Tate Jones uh, reflecting on the uh, acquisition of the original property in the first place in which, uh, I mean, Historic Museum of Fort Missoula is a very public kind of property kind of place in which it is kind of run through grants, taxes, and stuff like that. Tax, uh, Tate also worked for the Fort Missoula site for over 25 years and involved in the military history organization in Missoula. The intention of the site, according to Tate, was meant for public use and with recreation and light office use. After a series of public comments that I suggest you watch, it made me a believer. Uh, I was ready to for developers to do what they wanted on their private property, but the fort is something that seems to skew towards historic preservation. And uh, what other museum that you know of allows you to walk in the area and see all sorts of old school buildings that anyone can visit. And if you get permission from the fort, you can even enter some of these old buildings um, Grants can be awarded to save older structures while not affecting the integrity of Fort Missoula. So one of the big things is the, this uh, Fort Missoula got a big grant to be able to um, build and uh, restore a lot of those internment uh, camp buildings that were made during World War II. And um, yeah, it's just one of those things that are moving forward. And just think about it in terms of like how uh, we dealt with the easement for Ten Spoon Winery was a great example of Missoula uh, acquire an egg land to preserve for it for future generations. And whether or not it bears fruit is not up in the immediate knowledge. Um, I'll, it's not up to the immediate. So I'll mention this last before I wrap. It took 40 years to create the Fort Missoula Regional Park that we can enjoy at the fort today, but only when the majority of folks voted for it. Maybe it, should take less, uh, maybe it shouldn't take less than four years to build condos on Fort Missoula. So for more information, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can get involved um, with, pol uh, with uh, local politics and also find permitting and find out more information about how your local government works. Um, yeah, so as we uh, transition back into some of the things that are happening in the city of Missoula. We're gonna talk a little bit more about our first Friday. So it is the first Friday of the month and kicking things off is a poetry uh, exhibi exhibit happening at CS Port through CS Porter at uh, River P uh, Poetry. Uh, CS Porter students in collaboration with the Missoula Writing Collaborative and American Rivers from 5 to 8 p.m. at Missoula Pure West Real Estate, 101 Railroad Street, downtown by the Red X's, a collaboration between nonprofits at Missoula Writing, Writing Collaborative and American, again, they repeat this like five times. Students worked with local poets and instructor Sam Olson to write 
class poems about the Clark Fork River, uh, Clean, Clearwater River, Fish Creek, Kootenai, Kootenai Creek, uh, Morale Creek River, Rattlesnake Creek, and Rock Creek. The uh, three by six posters will be on display uh, for, uh, for First Friday at Pure West Realty from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, then we got a uh, pot sketch, which is going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula, which features small scale drawings uh, generously donated from local, national, and international artists in an assortment of incredible ceramic artworks. This year's auction features over 100 contributing artists. Fund raised during the pot sketch helps sustain the Clay Studio of Missoula facilities programs. And so you guys can check this out today as the auction is April 22nd. And many times this kind of art presentations get shown and it is the last time you get to see a lot of this great art. So, uh, Heart uh, Happy Homes, uh, Edana Gallery is uh, teaming up with Washington's Watson Children's Shelter uh, to uh, bring in an exhi exhibit through uh, happy, uh, Heart's Happy Homes. It starts with a one-on-one -on -one time with the parents and their kids. When you step into the Dana Gallery during this month of April, you'll see a silhouette of our families. Stop by on first Friday to learn more about this and the Healthy Foundations program. Then we got Matrix Press. And this is going to be at Zootown Arts Community Center. It's the University of Montana has been printing and collaborating with artists for 28 years. Matrix Press brings in nationally uh, and internationally known artists to produce limited edition prints in collaboration with students and printmaking faculties. The, this, uh, this exhibition highlights uh, recent art artistic collaborations covering the past five years. The artist includes represents a broad range of uh, backgrounds and artists' visions in print media. So there's a lot of artists going to be featured here, and it's going to be at Zootown Arts Community Center in the downtown Missoula area. Splinter, Sweet, and Tears. This is a variety of functions and sculpture ceramics cr uh, created in local atmosphere uh, kilns. Atmosphere in the sense refers to elements that circulate and adhere to the pots during the uh, firing process. Wooden uh, uh, soda salt firings are traditionally conducted by a group that remains true of the community of artists as well. And this is going to be at the artist shop starting at 5. So all this stuff is starting at 5. So this is actually a, a kind of a premiere of their first Friday events called Torrents of Arts for Missoula. It's going to be a group show highlighting the deluge brilliant local artists which um, Missoula boasts. Original works ranging in all styles from subject matters will be featured displaying local favorites as well as new faces including Jess Albert, Courtney Blazon, Kelly Borgnes, um, Monica Gillis, uh, Brings Yellow, Marlo uh, Casfisto, and uh, Chris Shank. Uh, there's Theo Ellsworth is going to be a part of it. So there's a lot of uh, folks and a lot of local artists that are going to be contributing to a torrent of art for Missoula in this group, group, uh, group show. So you guys can check that out. Um, then we got uh, Wildfire Ceramic Studios is hosting High Fire Art Show and Sale. And so this is the handcrafted wares from over 20 artists will be on display. Winter Ceramic Studios for the third annual High Fire. And it's going to be like a high fire, you know, so so the whole idea is that you'll follow these sorts of unique handmade ceramic pipes, bongs, and ashtrays. Uh, first thing I ever made with clay is ashtray. It was disgusting. 10% <laughs> um, of proceeds benefit the last uh, Prisoners Project. The Last Prisoner Project is a nonprofit organization dedicated to cannabis criminal justice reform. LPP was founded in uh, 2019 out of the belief that anyone is able to profit and build wealth in legal cannabis industries. Those individuals must also work to release and rebuild their lives of those who have suffered from cannabis criminalization. So you can find more information at lastprisonerproject.org. Finally, we got the Veterans Pottery Event. Exports for Vets and Wildfire teamed up for uh, pottery classes for veterans, and they will be on display for at the Old Beck VFW Post 209. This is going to be from 5 to 7.30. This, is the, this will go to benefit Missoula veterans and the arts community. So those are some of the things that are happening in, in the downtown Missoula for your first Friday. Um, I talk about some of the events that are also happening. It is the weekend, and we're going into the springtime. So it's a very weird as um, I can't necessarily tell you where a lot of yards and garage sales are happening. All I know is that they're definitely starting to really kick off as the weather is starting to get much nicer and nicer as we go into this weekend. So Swiftwater res Rescue Class. So as things get warmer, people are wanting to go out rafting, kayaking, and floating. Sweetwater Rescue Class through the Montana River Guides is hosting a uh, training. There are great classes for everyone to novice to recreation boaters of professional river guides and rescuers. So this is the Montana River Guide class. If you're interested in that, you can go to montanariverguides.com. 
You got yoga for healthy aging featured at the Red Willow Learning Center. Red Willow Learning Center is a great uh, kind of like a co-op education facility in which you can learn, you pay the instructor only, and a lot of times they facilitate that as well, and it is a wonderful uh, organization, Red Willow Learning Center, and also part, uh, and also in conjunction uh, with the Lifelong Learning Center. Um, so yeah, various classes and more than just yoga for all. Makerspace walk-in hours, Missoula Public Libraries does their regular makerspace week long. Uh, today, especially Fridays, starting at 9.30, they uh, do it uh, pretty much for people to walk in and do some makerspace. And makerspace is great for like mixed use of technology, 3D printing, scanning, uh, lasers, and all sorts of things like that. Family fun time all over the downtown Missoula area. This is a great thing, uh, indoor activities for a lot of families. Um, they got it at Mismo Gymnastics, YMCA, Rejector Sports Center, and I believe it's, um, oh, and also the Food Bank. Food Bank is also a community center as well, and at 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. today, they're having their food me meal distribution for all sorts of people struggling for food security. So, and Lifeline Learning Center is also doing a thing. They're doing um, enalmine, so this is a, uh, um, using some uh, over copper and silver, learn different application methods, including shifting and wet packaging, and uh, how to torch a kiln, fire pieces. At the end of your class, you will have a couple components you can take home and incorporate into your design. So this is a uh, enameling, enameling, of course. Reading, is, it's easier said than read a lot of times, so bear with me. Lunchtime at Missoula Senior Center, so $8 per person. If It's $5 for anyone 16 over. It's a, it's a kitchen, it's a general public, non-members, non-nutrition program. Th this is a no-cost option for those who may be low-income and approved by Missoula Agent Services. Please call for more information. This is going to be at the Missoula Senior Center. They're going to probably pick this back up. They were doing this a, a good amount of time before the pandemic, and now people are starting to get more public and be a little bit, uh, feel a little bit more safer amongst other folks and are starting to do this a little bit more. So, um, Yarns and Watercolor, Missoula Public Library starting at noon today. Lego Club in the afternoon at 2.30 p.m. It, they do it every week, all the time. Um, First Friday events, like I said, is going to be uh, all across uh, Missoula from 5 to 8 p.m. I already kind of gave you a rundown of a lot of those art installations. If you don't want to go check out the Missoula Art Museum, I don't know if they have a featured artist, but they usually have a lot of great featured art there as well every month. Uh, Children of the Atom, um, if you're interested in doing, going to a couple concerts tonight, this could kick you off at the Monks. Um, rock concert in the basement, uh, Bluegrass at the Cranky Stand Public House featuring Ben Larson and the Grown Assmen, um, uh, Big Sky Django Jazz Festival Night One, it's going to be at Free Cycles, um, Ryan Chrissy at the, and Rough Cuts at the Sunrise Saloon Country Music, um, Saturday markets and such are happening on Saturday, of course. Uh, before we, uh, we're, we're slowly transitioning to more of the farmer's market stuff. I believe they're going to start that in early May. Uh, could even start as early as late April. So check out for that. Look out for that. You can go to the Missoula Downtown Partnership for more information. Um, Saturday markets, the mall and Orchard Homes does their winter markets from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. They do it every Saturday. Um, science Circus, Big Sky uh, High School, back when I was in Big Sky High School, our science class had to do these uh, weekend kind of deals, and so we just uh, opened the gym up and we do a bunch of science ex exhibits for anybody who just wanted to learn about science. So it's a science circus. They'll be welcoming the public uh, on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Big Sky High School and encourage um, in science demonstration, display, and hands-on activity. It is a great environment. It has kids uh, teaching the public about science. So all sorts of exhibits include biology, chemistry, and physics. Demonstration under these categories includes walking on water, exploding ball of fire, and life-size tour of the digestive system, and a petting zoo, among other demos. So admission is $3 per person, age 6, uh, 5, and under. Well, well, why does it say? I guess 6 and under, get in free. Uh, find your inner kid at the Science Circus. For questions, you can call Victoria Tobiason, uh, mcpsmt.org. So Grizz is doing a hurling tournament. This is their 10th year anniversary. If you like the old school Irish sport, the 10 years of Montana here will uh, have them at the Mo Washington Grizzly Stadium. This is starting at 1230 noon on Saturday. I wish I could go. I, got, I, got, uh, I wish I could go, but I can't because we got a uh, MCAT Saturday drop-in at 1 p.m for kids age 8 to 14. It is a wonderful uh, um, uh, activity for a lot of kids to be a part of that. And then it, when you guys are uh, done with the hurling, you guys can hang out with the people um, over at the press box at 6 p.m. So if you enjoyed them so much during the hurling, you get to hang out with these folks that keeps this Irish sport alive in Missoula. So 
Uh, back to uh, this afternoon, uh, this morning afternoon, um, Saturday Kids Activities is going to be doing a scavenger hunt for the Montana Natural History Center um, in conjunct uh, um, parallel to uh, MCAT Saturday Drop-In. And MCAT Saturday Drop-In is a wonderful thing for kids to get involved with television and stop animation and stuff like that. So let's see. Mizzou Public Library is doing First Reads, Airness by Chelsea M uh, Markintel. Um, Mizzou Public Library is proud to present the Montana uh, Repertory Theater for First Reads, a four-part stage reading series fe uh, featuring local artists reading four contemporary plays for the rep. Um, it's going to be at Mizzou Public Library at 2 p.m. You guys can check that out here in the Public Library. Special activities at the UM Living Lab is also inside the library at starting at 4 p.m. Um, Jacob Roundtree is going to be at DraftWorks Brewing Company playing some music. Big Sky Django Jazz Night 2 is going to be at the Zach on um, Saturday night. They're on um, Free Cycles at 7 p.m. tonight, but they're going to be at the Zach tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. March 4th is going to be some funk music at the Wilma starting at 7 p.m. The Damaged Vision Tour is going to be rock music at Monk's. Julian Pianos is going to be at Stave and Hooper like they always are every Saturday at 8 p.m. Sarah Let's Say Karaoke at Westside Lanes and Fun Center every Saturday at 9 p.m. DJ with Chris Moon at 10 p.m. at the Badlander every Saturday. And then, of course, if you're interested in doing an Easter egg hunt, Valley Christian uh, High School Gym is doing the, an Easter egg hunt Sunday at 10 a.m. So those are the events that are happening this weekend. For more information, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net, find out exactly what's happening in Missoula. That's where I get a lot of my information in terms of just uh, looking at events. So without further ado, I wanted to thank you guys for joining the, me this morning. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp.